Mallorca, pretty much the go-to destination for UK cyclists seeking out that warmer weather. But what makes it so popular? And why do cyclists flock here year on year? Well, I'm here to find out and show you some of my highlights. First things first, when should you look to come to Mallorca? The island has got a Mediterranean climate, so in the summer it gets pretty hot, it's not them. October through to March, maybe April, that's what we'd recommend anyway. You're kind of escaping the rain in the winter months, or you're coming out for a training camp, getting ready for that season ahead. What about where to stay in Mallorca? There's two northern coastal towns that always pop up. Port de Palenza and Alcudia, and they're popular for a reason. It's the mixed terrain that surrounds them, the coastal paths, the rolling roads, and the climbs. Talking of climbs, I've heard there's some good ones. Should go have a look. There's only really one place to start when you talk about climbs in Mallorca, and that's Sacalobra. It's nine and a half K in length. It's got an average gradient of 7% whole host of amazing switchbacks. If you're here doing a bit of training, it's kind of a perfect place to come and do your FTP test, if that's your thing. But to be honest, just come and do it regardless. It's just a lovely road. It is an out and back, down and up. Um, kind of go down to the port, turn around, come back. But make sure you fit it in somehow, if it's a rest day or if it's into a longer loop. It really is worth doing. It sits in between Palenza and Soler, but it's perfect. It does get busy, as you can see, so make sure you come and do it early in the morning, but make sure to fit it in. It's definitely worth the trip. Next on the list is the Cap de Four Mentor. Now, in all honesty, this is more of a route and one of the most famous rides on the island for good reason. You start in Port de Palenza or roughly around there, you kind of add it in any way you want really but it's a ride out to a lighthouse right on the tip of the island and it is magical. We've done it a couple of times now and I could never get bored of it. You kind of have two climbs, it goes up from Porto Palenza to the midpoint, it's a car park up there, beautiful views, drop down into like a foresty bit, it's lovely. Back up and then all the way out to the lighthouse. It's about 40k, about a thousand meters of climbing, but you will not be disappointed. Make sure you get it on your list. Now that's the two most famous climbs out of the way. Should we go check out a couple that are slightly lesser known, quieter, but just as nice. Let's go check them out. We're on Puig Duranda, or just Cura. It's got a few names to be honest. Why have we put it on the list? Well, in all honesty, our man Liam. Liam Cahill, he recommended it. And I'm really glad he did. It's a lovely climb, 5K in length, 5% gradient. It's got a monastery at the top that serves cake and coffee. And to be honest, it's in a part of the island that's a bit quieter and it gives you a reason to come out to this part. You can kind of easily add in a loop from Palenza, Alcudia, and the views are just stunning. Like, look at this. Another climb with the monastery at the top is the Santa Magdalena. It's just outside Inca. It's 2K in length, a couple hundred meters of climbing. There is a restaurant at the top, it's not open right now, but you're coming up here for the views. It's quite quiet up here. Okay, granted, we're here at the end of the day, but it is quiet. Of course, there's the epic climbs. And you want to talk about the epic climbs, of course you do, but you need to enjoy your time on the island. And this is something that you need to come and see. Alongside this video, we've put together a collection of routes that include these climbs. You can find them on our commit profile. There's a link in the description below. I can't cover all the climbs and I know I've missed some. So if there's anything that we have missed, drop a comment in the section below. Right, that's enough of the climbs. Should we see what else this island's got to offer? A velodrome, that's right, a red one. Situated on the west side of Sonoa, it's free to use. Go get a few laps in. This 
This is Port de Canongue, easy for me to say. It's on the west side of Solaire, and why should it be on your list? Well, a few reasons. One, it's quiet. The view's amazing. There's a couple of restaurants that you can grab a bite to eat, but ultimately, it's the road down and back up. Hairpins for days, and you have to, have to come and see it. It's unbelievable. All this cycling, you gotta eat. That's why we've just checked out Tolo's. It's become a bit of a cycling institution, and throughout the year, you see herds of cyclists flock here for good food, drink. You know what? We've just finished up a pizza. Talking of stopping, eating and drinking, one thing that we haven't mentioned is any good cafes. Should we go check out some coffee stops? Ruta Verde is a little cafe in the scenic town of Kaimari. You're greeted with a smile by the team. Lennon's ace, the coffee's good. You've got bagels, cakes, avocado on toast, vegan options, gluten options, everything you could really want as a cyclist. There's ample space for bike parking. You've got tools inside, a few spares, so if you do get caught out, you're sorted. But in all honesty, just come for the vibe. It's so nice here. If you can factor it in on one of your days, in one of your routes, I'd certainly recommend it. You should go check out a few more. We're at Samala 13 in the small town of Sanoa, just around the corner from the Red Velodrome actually, so you can kind of tie them in together. The cafe started out in a car, would you believe it, in an old Renault, and the owners were looking for a garage, found this spot and actually turned it into a cafe. And I'm really glad they did because it's such a stylish spot. Nice seating indoors, outdoors, plenty of bike parking. And you know what, they've also got stand-up bikes upstairs, little showroom, so if you're looking for a new frame, why not? Um, great coffee, and I've been told by the camera crew, the orange juice is great. <laughs> On to the next one. The last in our trio of cafes is Cycling Planet in El Aro. You couldn't have guessed it by the name, it is a cycling cafe. There's loads of memorabilia indoors. The whole menu is around famous cyclists. The coffee is locally sourced. Just be mindful if you order a large coffee, it's about this size. There's also a mechanic on site, so if you really do get stuck, they should be able to help you out. It's a great spot, loads of seating, loads of parking for your bike. Get it on your list. the cafe out of the way we should really finish up on some riding and some routes make sure you head down to Antrax it's kind of that area with Galilea and Veldemosa all kind of linking around each other just north of Palma oh there's so many stunning rides around here we put a whole host of routes and rides over on our commute profile for you to check out I'm absolutely loving it and I'm so glad we headed down to this part of the island Mallorca, you have been amazing, and I don't want to leave, of course I don't. It's an absolute cycling paradise. Of course, I know, we couldn't bring you everything. And on that point, I just want to pick up on a couple of places. Solaire, lovely town to stay, easy access to amazing routes. And then on the other side of the island, on the east side, there's a climb, San Salvador. It's been recommended to me a couple of times. And please do drop a comment below with your highlights, anything we've missed, or any favorites that you think we should go and check out next time we come. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and like this video. We'll see you next time.